And from our studios in Newcastle tonight, Devinder Ghai is joining us. Mr. Devinder Ghai, first of all, congratulations on this very big legal victory. And all of India is Thank watching you, you tonight. Much. All of India is watching Thank you, you tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Guy, can you tell us what made you go in for this legal battle? What did you really want to do? Well, see, my father, my father always wanted an open funeral pyre when he died. That was in 1979. Mm -hmm. Because we couldn't send the body to India. We couldn't afford it. So, uh, I mean, when he died, I was very, very upset. Okay, then I found out that uh, in 1932, the princess of Nepal was given open funeral pyre in London. So I, uh, I thought, well, we start. So, you know, uh, and we unfortunately we found a body, and the mother wanted me to give the open funeral pyre to that boy. Because the body was lying there for six months, and the mother traveled all the way from, uh, from Katarpur, and she asked me. So when I approached the city council for a place in the crematorium, I was told, no, it's unlawful and illegal, and illegal. So what I did was, I did that uh, in the field. You know, I, I gave him the open funeral pie in the field. You know, and, uh, they weren't very happy with it. And they said it's unlawful, illegal. So I thought, well, let's go to the court and clarify it. You know, and uh, at the high court, the high court agreed with the city council that what I'm doing was illegal and unlawful. So we approached the appeal court where there were three top Lord judges. And what they said was, uh, the definition of the building could be uh, various. You know, a building can have two things at a time, like a, okay, a beauty salon and a restaurant. So they, the judges asked me what I would be happy with. I said, well, as long as there are four pillars and a roof over it, and instead of a, a gas flame, my son lights my fire with a wooden flame, and I collect my ashes on the same day, I would be happy. Mr. Guy? Uh, see? Uh, yeah. Mr. Guy, uh, did you fight this legal case for yourself or for the Hindu community, Hindu and Sikh community in the United Kingdom? No, no, I tell you. See, I'm a, I'm a pensioner. I'm a disabled man. I run a charity, see? And uh, now what I did was, uh, I was collecting the money for my charity, but I fought it for all the Hindus, Sikhs, and not but anybody who wants to open funeral pyre. See? And uh, what was it? I had some opposition for some Sikh extremist groups, and some from the self-appointed Hindu leaders also, that, well, uh, we don't want it here. So I thought, well, I should go for myself, that I want it. Because I've been here for 54 years, and I've paid all my taxes. So, okay, if I get it, they all get it. Uh, Mr. Guy, when you went in for this fight, yeah. because this, I find this an extremely unusual kind of legal case. Did people tell you? Yeah. Were there people there who said, Mr. Devinder Ghai, you are in the United Kingdom. Don't try and change yeah. the laws of the United Kingdom because you cannot do what you do in India in the United Kingdom. What I mean is, were you not being provocative to some people in the local community? Did oh, they yes, not I attack mean, you? Oh, no, no, no. See, the thing is, I was threatened. I was threatened. See, my charity, if you go on the website, and I'm the founding president of Anglo-Asian Friendship Society, and which is one of the largest interfaith charity in Northeast. I wasn't given any grants by the city council. 
they made things very difficult for me. The legal aid I didn't get. I had the solicitors who were fighting for me for free. And you know, whenever we went for the legal aid, they were saying, no, the chances of winning the case are very remote. But see, I did give the hope. I, uh, I'm a struggler, and uh, I achieved what I went for. And secondly, see the Hindus, I don't know, many Hindus were under the impression what I was doing was unlawful and illegal. Mm -hmm. Because uh, that's what the government said, and that's what the city council said. But since the ruling yesterday, I've been getting a lot of support. And secondly, uh, the Secretary of State, Jack Straw, made a silly comment that this is abhorrent, this could be very smelly and very dirty for the host community. Right. See, and that united the Hindus up. Uh, Mr. See, what they said was, what has been going on for thousands of years, how could it be abhorrent and dirty? Absolutely. See, all those uh, Indian leaders or the celebrities who die, they always have an open funeral pyre. Absolutely. And the queen is represented there. Well, I, so I, how could that be abhorrent? Well, Mr. Mr. Devinder Ghai, let me say you are an unusual, unusual guest I have on the news hour tonight. I'm so glad I have you on the show. I want to just say once again, my guest on the news hour tonight, who deserves to be congratulated, is the 71-year-old Devinder Ghai who in a landmark judgment that he has fought on his own in Britain's Court of Appeal has won the right to be cremated after his death in an open-air funeral pyre as per Hindu religion. Mr. Devendra Ghai, once again, congratulations. And thank keep you up much. the fighting spirit. Thank congratulations you. and thank you for joining me on the news hour this evening. A British Court of Appeal has ruled that Hindus here can perform last rites in open-air funeral pyres. This is a personal victory for 71-year-old Devendra Ghai from Newcastle, who fought a four-year-long legal battle so that he could be given a traditional Hindu send-off. I'm 20 years younger. Not only that, now if I go tomorrow, I'll go peacefully. Because I know, see, these are all my team, they will give me a good send-off. The law on cremation in the UK provides for cremations within a crematoria or a designated building. The British government's stand was that a building is understood to be a closed vault and roof structure, not conducive to funeral pyres. Devendra Ghai's team argued otherwise. The ruling was based on the simple definition of the term building under the 1902 Cremation Act. Mr. Ghai had contended that uh, he is happy to conduct open fire funerals in structures without uh, a roof or even without walls, which could still be described as a building. The Newcastle City Council, which has so far blocked Ghai's attempt to establish a site for open fires, says that the ruling does not take into account planning and public health legislation. Ghai may have won his religious freedom in court, but he'll still have to face health and environmental roadblocks. With Akansha Banerjee in London, in New Delhi, Akansha Pradeep. 71-year-old Davinder Ghai, who describes himself as a devout Hindu spiritual healer, says he can now die a peaceful death, knowing that his send-off will be according to his religious beliefs. He has been fighting for the right to be cremated on an open-air funeral pyre. The Court of Appeal today allowed cremations on funeral pyres in Britain with the caveat that they be held in a structure with walls and a roof with an opening and not an open field. The mother wanted me to give him an open funeral pyre as it's done in India for the release of his soul. I went to the city council and they refused. They said, no, it's unlawful. Okay, now just say it's not unlawful because See, in the crematorium, it's a building. Building can consist of so many things. A building has a restaurant, a building has a this, and he could have, the city council could have accommodated me there. Now, see, they give the land to the Muslims in the crematorium. They give the land to the Jewish people in the crematorium. That's what I asked for. Ghai was refused a permit for a cremation site in a remote part of Northumberland in northern England in 2006. The Newcastle City Council had said the burning of human remains anywhere outside a crematorium was prohibited under the 1902 Cremation Act.
with Swati Maheshwari in the UK, Ambika Varma, NDTV.